Happy mid-October! The Estate Part 2 is coming out next Friday, and in the meantime, we have a ton of listener tales to enjoy. So, let's get right into it. Okay, so, um, hi, my name is Shannon. Um, this happened, I want to say it was probably in 2010. Um, I moved with my family into an apartment. They had just been renovated because there was a fire. And we came to find that out later. It was on the third floor. Plenty of room for everybody. Very nice. So we unpack, we're getting settled. It doesn't really have a terrible spooky feeling <laughs> at first, but it's cold in certain places. Mm-mm. One of the bedrooms is frigid. One of the bathrooms is always always cold and and really windy, you know, a little bit breezy for the indoor (laughs) area where there's no windows. And really it was my mom who started to notice that there was just always a feeling of something being behind her, something looking over her shoulder. And of course we're like, yeah, mom, whatever, that's fine. (laughs) But then we started to notice that there was a closet in the hallway with one of those slatted doors and the light would just come on, on its own. Um, When everybody was sitting together in the living room, nobody's in the hallway, nobody's down there. The light just starts to come on. You know, we blew it off at first. We talked to the apartment about the wiring They came and checked it out. They said it was fine. At one point, I was rearranging the cabinets and I took all of the plate, like all not plates, but like all of the sheet pans out and put them on top of the dryer because it was an apartment. So everything was small and the, you know, the units were up next to each other in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. But I, I stacked them, you know, in a level way. Everything big was on the bottom. It was all flat. It wasn't rickety. It wasn't moving. I left the room to go take a break for a minute and my mother went into the kitchen and got something to drink and on her way out the pans picked themselves up off of the dryer and flung themselves across the kitchen and bounced off of the refrigerator and onto the floor oh my god nobody could explain it of course we're confused we don't understand even then we tried to, you know, just explain it away. I must not have stacked them evenly. They must have fallen. Totally. Something. Totally. And then my mother and my brother went out of town to go visit my grandparents and they're quite elderly at this point and I'm sick. So I stay home and it's me and, you know, my big great Dane and, you know, we're just relaxing and trying not to get sicker. And the apartment is quiet. It's quiet as a tomb. Mm. So that night I go to sleep in the living room on the couch. And it's somewhere in the middle of the night, early morning, when I wake up because I'm cold. And the blanket that's over me goes from being at waist high to being pulled up to my shoulder. Oh. You know, and then there's this pat on my shoulder. Oh dear. And at first I'm like, my mom is so sweet. And then I realize I'm there by myself. There's nobody there with me. So whatever this is, it, it doesn't like my mother and it likes me. Um, my mother can be difficult. She (laughs) often has an attitude. So, and and a lot of the time with me because I'm confrontational and I just tell her what's on my mind. (laughs) So a little time goes by. I tell my brother about this, but I don't tell my mom because she doesn't want to believe that kind of thing. She doesn't think it's real. Okay. And they come back from being out of town. Things are quiet for a few days. And then she and I have an argument. 
And every time she gets up to go down the hallway for the next few days, the light in the closet starts to flicker on and off mm-hmm. violently, you uh-huh. know. And it's not like just the light is coming on, the switch is going up and down. And at one point, you know, she's walking down the hallway and she passes the bathroom door and the cat box goes flying out of the bathroom behind her, like somebody kicked it. So there's just so many of these things that I finally go up to the apartment office and I ask them, I know you just renovated, but why? Because there's a lot going on in this apartment. And I don't want to get into all of it because we don't know each other very well. But it's very creepy up there. And she says to me, oh, well, that building caught on fire. And a few people passed away in the building. Oh, God. And so we were forced to rebuild a whole corner of the building. And it just so happens to be the corner of the building that you're in. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that might have been good for us to know. And she said, well, you know, we just, all we have to tell you is that we renovated. We don't have to tell you why. (laughs) So whatever. Okay. Okay. And a friend of mine who is so interested in this whole thing starts to do a little bit of research. Oh, fine. And she finds that of the people who perished in the fire, one of them was a woman who had a young teenage daughter um, and she passed away and the daughter Aww. did not. Aww. So upon further research, she finds a video of the daughter speaking to the news and the daughter looked quite a bit like me, which explains why oh, this boy. ghost loved me and couldn't quite stand that my mother didn't appreciate me or so she perceived. Oh, so, um, given this is awkward, just spitting this out. So, you know, definitely I I hope you use it. That, that was really spooky and incredible, but I did end up hopping through like a time warp when you (laughs) said your mom noticed something first and you were all like, yeah, mom, whatever. That's fine. Because, I can just hear my daughters from the future saying that exact same thing to me. So thank you for sharing that. Very spooky. All right, here's our next one. Uh, Hi, Liz. I found your podcast recently. really love it. And so I want to tell you my creepy tale. It was a dream, but it was about shadow people. It got kind of intense. This was about four or five years ago. And I was having this dream that I was in the apartment that I live in now. Still, I'm moving soon. Just bought a house. So good things but in the dream I was in my bedroom which is sort of in the back of the apartment like the master room and I heard a dripping coming from a faucet and as I got up I noticed that the closet in my room had switched from the right or the left side of the room to the right side of the room and it had a lot of locks on the door (laughs) that was unusual but I just got up and it was kind of that dim like Hollywood light where you can see in the dark but the room is actually pitch black and I go into the bathroom, and there's, like, just a nightlight on and a dripping faucet, and it was driving me crazy, so I fix the drip. I get it to stop, and I go back to my room to lay down, and as I'm laying down, I hear a door creak, and I look up in the dream, and all of the locks on the closet door have come undone, and they're all different kinds of locks, like a padlock, a sliding bolt lock, you know, regular door lock. Spooky. And there's a creaking sound, and I was more annoyed than upset at this point. I was kind of like, oh, God, I don't want to get out of bed again. This is awful. So, <laughs> in the dream, I get up, and I hear something walking towards the living room. And I go out, I go down the hall, and it's pitch black, like, at this point in the dream. I'm just walking by sense memory, essentially. And I get to the kitchen, living room area of the apartment, and I see the sea. I... I don't know how you see when it's this dark in the room, but you do. It was like two figures that were darker than the rest of the room. Mm-mm. And I could feel they had faces, but there was no face present. Like there was eyes, but no eyes, and mouth, but no mouth. Mm. And I saw them, and I was just so pissed off that they had woken me up again that I'm like, all right, fine. You guys want to play games? Then I'm going to banish you. And I go to flick on the light switch, <laughs> and nothing happens. And then I can feel the intensity and just sort of this malevolence behind it 
like they I could feel them smiling and grinning at me and mm. that was when I finally woke up it is by far one of the most unsettling dreams I've ever had after that I heard somewhere else and some other piece of horror fiction because like you and like most listeners that think i'm a horror junkie and somebody mm-hmm. mentioned shadow man so i started looking them up and apparently it's like a worldwide cultural thing that some mm-hmm. people believe or have encountered the shadow man it's like well that's that's not great anyways hope you enjoyed <laughs> yeah that definitely is not great that is a really scary dream the um coolest explanation of shadow men that i've heard is on the dead files by with um amy allen the psychic medium and she claims that when she was younger there was either one or more shadow figures that were in her house that were like trying to kill her apparently they're interdimensional creatures and they are very bad and there's no like there's no way to get rid of them so Spooky dream. Hope that's all that it was, but I'm sure you're fine. (laughs) Hi, Liz. This is Madison from Denver, Colorado, and I will be sharing with you one of the scariest stories I have from working in a haunted, haunted house. Now, I used to work in a super popular haunted house in Denver here. It was on the outskirts of downtown, and it was in this giant warehouse. Ooh. Everybody who worked at the haunt used to talk about how the warehouse was haunted by actual ghosts. You know, everybody had this story or that. It was really a bonding point for all of the coworkers to just kind of, you know, enjoy together, essentially. I myself tried really hard not to participate because I'm personally kind of sensitive. The more attention I give ghosts, the more attention they seem to give me, and I just prefer it to be that way, especially when I'm working. Now, on this one night, I'm working what's called the slam door position, And essentially what that means is the customers are coming through a part of the haunted house that is like an underground sewer system, or it's meant to look like one anyways. Um, And as these customers were walking through, they would come to this long hallway with a right-hand turn at the end of it. As they reached the right-hand turn, someone would throw on these strobe lights and pop out of a sewage tunnel above their head to scare them (laughs) from overhead. Oh my god. Then they would round that right-hand turn down another long hallway, and my slam door was at the end of this hallway. My job was to throw the door open when everybody got close enough and make the huge scene and scare everybody that way. <laughs> now, I would know I needed to get ready to scare people because my coworker would throw on those strobe lights, which I could see on the wall, and I would actually be able to see my coworker's shadow on the wall as they were out of the tunnel scaring people. That way I knew someone was about to round the corner. Oh, boy. The only time I knew I didn't need to prepare to scare anybody was if those strobes went off and I didn't see a shadow. What that meant was that one of our managers was coming by to check on us. They're called a runner. Runners would come by and give us water or cough drops or trade spots with us so we could take a break. They were there to take care of us, pretty much. And the reason my coworker would draw on the strobes was just so that the runner would know they were paying attention and doing their job. So it's a rather slow night. We're just kind of hanging out. It's 8, 8.30, so we haven't had a lot of people come through because it's still pretty early in the night, especially for a haunted house. Wow. I see the strobes go off and I don't see a shadow. So I know that my runner, let's call him C, is coming (laughs) down my direction. C rounds the corner. And like I said, it's a pretty long hallway. And just, he's kind of moseying down on his way towards me. Just, you know, not making any quick movements because, like I said, it's pretty slow. He gets about halfway down the hallway and I see the strobes go off again, but no shadow. At that point, I'm a little bit confused, and I didn't really have a long time to ponder it, because this person comes from around the corner, sprinting towards C. I'm in a panic. I think this crazy customer is about to tackle my runner, so I throw myself out of my position, and I start running towards him, Mm. and right as I do, this person just disappears into C's back. And I mean, hits C, and is gone. C doesn't move. C doesn't jolt like anyone's hit him, just keeps walking towards me. I stopped dead in my tracks because I know what I've just seen. I'm in t- just in an absolute tizzy over what's going on. And C comes up to me and he's like, are you okay? Oh my gosh, like, you, what's got you so panicked? And I'm like, uh. am I okay? Are you okay? Because I feel like you should be in some pain. Are you in any pain? And I'm trying to check on C and C's trying to check on me. And he goes, no, I need you to stop. Your nose is gushing blood. 
up and lo and behold, I look down and I've got blood all over my face. It's all over my clothes. I'm like, oh my God. And I just don't even know where to put my energy at this point. I'm just all kinds of panicked. So C trades places with me and he lets me go to take a break and I collect myself. I'm a little nervous about going back, but I spend the rest of the night in this position. I don't even bother to tell him what happened because he's one of the people who didn't really believe in the spirits being in the warehouse. Okay. Finally, the night comes to an end and we're all packing up to leave. And I run into the coworker of mine who was working the other position with the strobe lights. And I stopped mm-hmm. her and I was like, hey, what was going on with those strobes that one time C passed us? I saw you turn on the strobes when he was like halfway to me, but you didn't pop out of your hole and nobody was there. And she kind of looked at me and she was like, it's weird that you ask because that was the only time all night that the strobes glitched. I didn't turn them on. Oh, what the heck? And I just stopped and I was like, really? Like you didn't see anybody at all? And she was like, no, the strobes just went off and I spent a couple minutes trying to figure out why, but never really got a valid reason. It was kind of weird. I just looked at her and I was like, yeah, it was kind of weird, wasn't it? (laughs) Anyways, that's my story about working in a haunted haunted house. I've got more, of course, but I think that one's one of the freakiest. Thank you so much for the podcast. I love your work. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. Wow. I am not a haunted house person um I don't like jump scares they scare me I'm more of a cozy horror type um but I wonder there's so many like the fear and there's so many strong feelings there that on top of the whatever intelligent hauntings going on there I wonder if there could be some kind of residual like like you saw like a past person that came through the haunted house do you know what I mean I don't know. That's weird. I would not like the idea of a ghost just like disappearing into my back though. No, thank you. So my name is Mark. I'm originally from Washington, DC, but this story takes place in Bronxville, New York. For those of you who don't know, Bronxville is a suburb outside of New York City, about 25 minutes on the train. Hmm. Um, And it's very similar in terms of uh, its demographics to Wellesley, Massachusetts. Okay. My best friend grew up in Bronxville in a, a really beautiful grand home that had a beautiful winding center staircase that went up across all three floors oh. um, up to a top floor. All my life I'd been growing up going there to visit, never had anything weird. After college um, in Massachusetts, I moved to New York City, and it was the weekend of Halloween, and my my friend and I went out to visit her parents for the weekend, um, and we brought her new puppy. Right away, the dog <laughs> ran up all three flights of the stairs um, and began barking at the guest room door at the, at the foot at the top of the stairs. Oh, boy. Um, which was so weird. I'd stayed there probably a hundred times before and and nothing ever really caught us off guard. To give a little bit of history about the house, um, the house was built in the early 1900s by a rich developer who had built three mansions like right in a row, one for each of his daughters. Um, And the daughter who occupied this particular house had attended Sarah Lawrence College, which is in Bronxville. And upon graduation, she moved into the house um, and stayed there until she died as a widow. Um, She was very much a recluse. um, And the only way that they had found out that she had died was that the Bronxville taxi service, um, which delivered her bread, eggs, and vodka every week, did not receive a order from her that week and so they realized that she had passed away the house sat vacant for a few years before my friend's family decided to move in Um, by this time the house was fully covered in ivy Um, it was in need of a lot of repairs it it, it was Mm. just like in a very um, shambolic state from first floor to third floor Mm. Um, and when they moved in the third floor hadn't actually been finished it was it was mostly just an attic And as they were doing their final walkthrough, they went up to the third floor and found that the attic was in complete disarray. A 
aside from finding a beautiful old diamond ring and wow. secret diaries, they had also found that the woman had been plucking crows from who had been nestling in the ivy uh, and ritually sacrificing them uh, uh, on the floor. Oh no! Um, and so they found about fifty ritually sacrificed dead oh, crows Jesus. Um, scattered about the rafters of of the attic of their home. Unexpected. Um, over time, they refinished everything. They turned one one side of one side of the house into a guest wing where I usually stayed, and then the other side into a living room, game room sort of situation. Um, cut back to the present day Halloween weekend of I want to I want to say twenty thirteen, and we had spent the day um, at her mother's charity, kind of doing doing some work there, and, and we were tucking ourselves into sleep. I went to bed, shut the door, um, nothing crazy. Around two in the morning, I woke up. Uh, to feel the dog um, had gotten into my room and, and was kind of hopping around on, on my legs. Um, and so I, I woke up and I opened my eyes and, and I saw that the dog wasn't there. Um, oh. My calves, even though I had felt him walking all over me, uh, Rudy was nowhere to be found. So I went back to sleep. Again, mm. I woke up probably 15 minutes later um, feeling the dog walk around my knees and, and my lower... Oh my lower half of my upper legs and uh i woke up and, and he wasn't there again um still confused but also very groggy i went back to sleep and and a third time i woke up and he was on my upper thighs um kind of trying to climb all over me except once again he wasn't there this time though as i as i sort of my eyes adjusted to the darkness um in the corner hanging from the ceiling i saw this very old hag-like woman kind of hanging like a bat very slowly no. no very much what you envision from sleep paralysis no. and so i realized you know okay i'm just having sleep paralysis it was terrifying but i was able to sort of separate myself and understand that that's what was happening woke up the next morning after i'd fallen back asleep didn't really think too much about it i get back to the city um and i I'm with my roommate and we're, we're showing each other our Halloween costumes. I have decided to dress as a pink highlighter. So I wear a lot of spandex <laughs> um, and, and it, was a, it was a pretty skimpy <laughs> outfit. And I, I come out of my room to show my roommate what I'm wearing and she just asks and says, what happened to you? And I'm completely baffled. I have no idea what she's talking about. Uh-oh. And she's like, look at your legs. And when I looked down, my legs were covered from my calves all the way up my thighs in bruises. I looked like a cheetah who had been fully spotted and and set in the wild. Um, To this day, I have have no explanation for what happened. Um, I only told my friend and her family about it years later because I didn't want to freak them out. Mm there have been a few odd things that happened in the house uh, before and since then, um, but that was probably the most dramatic manifestation of anything that um, ever occurred in, in that house. Oh my god. That is incredibly frightening. The, the crows, plucking the crows from the ivy to ritually sacrifice them. That's pretty horrible. But oh my god, seeing a woman hanging like a bat from the corner of a room. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that was a really good scary story. That's frightening. So I hope that, I bet you never see that again. And I hope no one in that house ever sees that again. Hi, Liz. My name is Amy. I live in Washington, DC. I really love ghosts and the burps. And I am now inspired to share my own paranormal story with you since you added uh, this tell me a story link. Really cool. Uh, in 1998, I was visiting a portion of England called the Cotswolds and a little village called Borton on the Water, all hyphenated, with my friend Shemaine. And we checked into a hotel that had been operating since 1710 or something like that called the Old New Inn really thick walls, really big rooms, really nice people. But uh, we checked in to the old new inn. We got a room with two twin beds. 
between us there was a nightstand with a lamp on it hmm. and not much else we had room for our backpacks we had room for our um, our belongings and we put our stuff down and then headed out and explored the village and the surrounding countryside hmm. when we went back to the hotel at night we got cleaned up went to bed um, I remember when the lights went out in the room I could not even see my hand in front of my face it was so so dark oh. I don't even know if street lights exist in the town and I fell asleep and sometime that night I was awoken by the sound of someone whispering in my ear oh, it no. was an urgent kind of fierce whisper oh. the words weren't words that you and I would recognize it sounded like gibberish um, I will try to recreate it now <gasps> kind of like that kind of oh like God. air escaping from a balloon mm -hmm. but it had a human quality to it and I woke up and <sighs> turned on the light I kind of you know jostled the things on the, the nightstand, turned on the light, the room's empty except for me and my friend. Oh my god. My heart was racing, but I looked around, everything seemed fine. I took a few deep breaths, pulled myself together, shut the light off. And the same thing happened within the next few minutes. Someone whispering in my ear, some oh. made up language, but there was a lot of um, energy in what this thing was trying to tell me. Oh so I God. sat up again, turned on the light, said, Shemaine, Shemaine, woke up my friend. Yeah. What, what, what is it, Amy? Did you hear that? No, what are you, what are you talking about? There was someone whispering in my ear just a few minutes ago. It happened twice. She had heard nothing. Mm. She had slept throughout it all. And I left the light on yeah. for the rest of the night. Um, she just turned the other way so the light wouldn't bother her. I think she believed me, but <laughs> I know it wasn't a dream. I can't explain it at all. I just figure a lot of travelers have slept in that room over the 300 years that place has been standing. Yeah. Anyway, people going to Borton on the Water ought to look up the Old New Inn it's beautiful <laughs> and it's got some definite paranormal action going on okay that's all i got keep up the great work <laughs> wow yeah i would be keeping my light on from then on never again when i turn the lights off i heard that whispering when i was going to sleep or if being woken up by that whispering would be even worse I love the stories that you create. Not only do they frighten me, they also inspire me. So thank you for everything that you do. I was hoping to take this time to tell you about my childhood home and everything spooky that happened there while I was a kid. Uh, the story starts in the 90s, so no cell phones, no really major technology was happening then. My parents were scrambling to find another home uh, they had sold their house previously and still hadn't closed on something new. And they found a for sale by owner listing in our local paper. And the house was way more than they ever expected. And they still to this day say it's too good to be true. <laughs> and they definitely priced the house because something weird was going on there. Oh. When they bought the house, the owner asked my parents not to change anything uh, as his wife had made it their quote unquote dream home. My mom crossed her fingers oh. and agreed. Like most new homeowners, my parents made small changes just to their preference. A few days into moving, my mom got incredibly sick. Mm. For days, she could barely get out of bed. Now, that could just be a coincidence, but what happened after is when things started to get strange. My dad mm. is a creature of habit. Every time he comes home, he sets his keys, wallet, and change down in the same bowl by the door. It's honestly been the same bowl. For my entire life. <laughs> he did not like things to go missing. 
After my mom started feeling better, we went over to my grandparents for dinner. We came home, went to bed. There's absolutely nothing out of the ordinary. The next morning, my dad's wallet wasn't in the bowl. He checked his pants from the day before, the car, even called my grandma to see if he had left it at her house. Mm-hmm. And it simply vanished. After about a week of it missing, my mom started unpacking a box that had been packed months before. She cut the tape, opened the box, and there sitting right on top was my dad's wallet. Thirty Weird. years later, they still have no idea how it could have got in there. From there, other things started to go missing. Small things, like utensils, pencils, an address book, a huge bottle, etc. And most <laughs> frustratingly, my Polly Pocket kit, it was a little shell one. That oh. disappeared too. Very frustrating as a kid. Things in my room would also get rearranged, but also like they were lovingly rearranged, like a mother smoothing a bread spread oh. or setting down my favorite teddy bear in the middle of the bed. Neither of my parents had done it, and I was too young to know to do it myself, so we have no idea how that happened. Mm. I have these memories of these golden orbs floating around me as I played. That felt calm, it felt comforting. Oh. It almost felt like there was a grandmother hanging out with me. Everything was great, and it was pleasant, until everything seemed to go darker, and those golden orbs started coming around less and less. I've always been sensitive to energies and spirits, and nothing has ever compared to the negativity I felt in that house when this change happened. Hmm. At night, I'd sleep with my door open, and I would see this dark figure pacing up and down the hallway in front of my door, going from the living areas into the bedroom area. I felt eyes on me whenever I went into the basement. Uh. I almost felt like I was being hunted. Our basement was just a no-fly zone for me. It was too dark, it was too icky feeling. In that basement, we had a sliding glass door that led up to the backyard in a small patch of woods. One night, we were woken up by that sliding glass door opening and shutting, slamming shut. Mm. Open, slam, open, slam, over and over. My mom came into my room and locked us in. Oh. My dad picked up our new fancy cordless phone, called the police, and ran downstairs. The door was shut and locked when he looked, and he turned on all the lights downstairs and found nobody. The police ended up coming over. They searched the house, the woods, and even fingerprinted the door. There were no prints except for my parents on it. A few months later, my parents went out, and I had a babysitter. She was our neighbor, and her dad was a local police officer, so they trusted her, trusted the family, and they knew that I would be safe with her. (laughs) That's when it all happened again. Remember this vividly. I was sitting on the couch with my Yogi Bear stuffed animal, watching the Yogi Bear special that was on Cartoon Network, and we heard the door in the basement open and slam shut. Uh. She went and peeked downstairs, thinking maybe my parents had come home early and were trying to be quiet, and she screamed, saying Mm. that she saw someone standing at the bottom of the stairs. She grabbed my arm, grabbed the phone, and locked us in a room again. A few minutes later, her dad was there and a bunch of cops. My parents came home to the house Mm. lit up and having to find a new babysitter. She refused to ever come back. (laughs) There were so many instances of tapping and slamming and things going missing. It never seemed to end. One Mm. afternoon, it all came to a head. I was in the basement with my mom, and I was watching a movie. And she was painting in the guest bedroom that we had down there. I remember looking down at this glass coffee table that we had. And not just standing up and looking down, almost like I was hovering over it. And the next thing Mm. I knew, I was on the other side of the room. And the pictures that were on the wall were on the floor next to me. I remember thinking, why are these on the floor? My mom ran out because she heard a slam on the wall and yelled that whatever was there needed to leave us alone. Mm. That it was not welcome. And that if it had to pick on somebody, make it her, not her child. And that was mm. absolutely terrifying to me as a kid. My God. I just remember feeling terrified and then finally calming down and sitting on the floor, helping my mom put all of these picture frames in a pile. 
and feeling those golden orbs come back and seeing them float around us and feeling that comfort again, like something was coming over to protect us. A few weeks later, the priest came to bless our house and we started to go to church more regularly. Everything calmed down after that, but it never felt right. You still felt eyes on you down in the basement. Things still went missing, but there was no major actions like what had happened that afternoon. Mm -mm. When we finally moved, it was such a huge relief. My parents, I remember seeing my parents just elated to be out of that house. And honestly, I felt the same way. And that's my, that's my story of my spooky haunted house. Um, Thanks for everything that you do, Liz. I hope that if remote learning continues for you guys, that you survive it, because I am trying to. It's been difficult so far. Oh, Thanks yeah. for all of your content and always putting a smile on my face, and I hope that you enjoyed my story. I'll talk to you soon. Oh, my goodness. First of all, best wishes with remote learning. That is a true haunting. Um, your story totally reminds me of the second Conjuring movie. It just seems like a really classically haunted house, and that is terrifying. I can only imagine that you and your family have, like, PTSD from that. I, That was just, it seems, I don't know, just so constant. That is very scary, so thank you for sharing. Hi, Liz. This is Leslie. First of all, I adore you. I listen every night before <laughs> bed. Please never do a last interview again. Anyways. So, I tend to get feelings that my family members haunt me. For example, oh. my sister-in-law passed away at 35 from cancer, and oh. we used to play this really stupid game where when we would, like, meet or see each other, we would try to flip each other off the <laughs> fastest. <laughs> and one night, I was playing with this TikTok ghost filter, and um. I saw this outline of a girl with curly hair flipping me the bird. Um, I don't uh -uh. believe that the filter works, but I do think my sister-in-law would find it hilarious to try to mess with me. <laughs> so, but anyways, this one's more about my grandfather. Oh. He's the one I have most proof of. We were very close, and he kind of started my paranormal obsession by telling me ghost stories from a very young age. Oh. When he got older, he developed dementia, and my grandmother developed Alzheimer's. He would say these oh. bizarre things that seemed like he was trying to upset my mother. Like, once he told us, like, out of the blue that he sold her horse when she was little and the person killed it, and my mother knew that wasn't true, so he was just telling her that to make her upset. So, anyway, he died about five years ago. I went home for the funeral, and I was sleeping in my childhood bedroom. My parents keep it insanely hot, so I have a fan I keep on my nightstand. I was in that weird twilight sleep when the fan fell off to the floor. So I figured it just vibrated itself off, and I didn't think anything of it, so I put it back, and I kind of anchored it with other things to keep it still, and it fell off every time I would fall asleep. At least five times, this thing fell off, no matter how I arranged it. And finally, hmm. I said, knock it off, Papa, I'm trying to sleep, and it stopped. It never happened again. Yeesh. Months later, my daughter said she had an imaginary friend named Happy All, who wore a green jacket. And she did it games. I didn't uh, understand this at first until I remembered my uh, grandfather was in the army and they obviously had green uniforms. And I used to accuse my grandpa of cheating at Domino's when I was little. He always thought that was hilarious and he would tell that story all the time. Uh, I had forgotten all about it. And Peppy All sounds a lot like Peppa. Later, my sister saw a psychic who told her that my grandfather wanted to apologize to my mom for the things he said to her later in his life. Oh. And that he split his time watching me and my sister. He particularly likes to ride in the car with us. <laughs> so, not as spooky as others, but I find it comforting and a little funny. Um, thanks for listening. Oh, that is really comforting and very silly. He sounds awesome. Oh my goodness. It still is creepy when a child says they have a new friend that they play with, though. <laughs> but it is comforting, too. Thank you for sharing that. Love the podcast. I actually grew up in Massachusetts. Um, oh. My name is Nicole. I grew up in a town by the name of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Sure. It's an old mill town. Mm -hmm. um, lots of hills, lots of valleys. Uh, we used to make, I think furniture was the big export at the time, but they also mm. made a lot of um, 
textile stuff. Mm. Uh, so I grew up in a typical New England two-family home. It was um, one apartment, basically, or one yeah apartment on top of another one, uh, double decker. Uh, my parents bought the house when I was about three years old in the early '80s, and um, started renovating it right away. Um, shortly after I moved in, I started having night terrors. It oh, wasn't no. something that happened before. Um, I was a really heavy sleeper as a kid, and I would get up in the middle of the night and scream bloody murder. I'd run to my parents' bedroom and just stand in the middle of their bedroom screaming my head off. Um, just oh, thought boy. it was my quirk, and, and to be fair, I still do it not to that extreme by any stretch of the imagination as an adult. Um, you know, super fun. My husband loves it, but as a kid, it was really extreme. Mm. And I, as I grew up in the house, it, I always had certain feelings in certain areas. Um, nothing strange really ever happened while growing up there. Um, you know, I, I never spent a lot of time in my closet because it always gave me the creeps. Um, things like that. I didn't ever mm. like being alone in the house, even though I never ever really was alone because there was somebody living downstairs. Um, but the basement always creeped me out. I used to run up two flights of stairs because mm -hmm. you just get that overwhelming, like, feeling that something was chasing you. Um, but we never saw anything, never, whatever, you know, moved out, went to college. Uh, I happened to move back in when, um, I was doing an internship, right? The, the first floor was empty. So my mom and dad, come on in, you can live here, you know, while you do your internship since you're not getting paid any money. Um. <laughs> And I did, and I, I happened to bring um, a roommate with me. And my best friend moved in with me, we were both in school. And you know, it was a happy little place to live. We had this big, beautiful apartment, um, mm. you know, eight foot, 10 foot ceilings, all Pretty. kinds of you know, woodwork everywhere. It was beautiful, the house was gorgeous. Mm. Um, but things started happening pretty soon after that. I uh, went to bed one night and woke up in the middle of the night, it was like twilighty outside-ish, mm. I could see. And when I sat up in my bed and looked, my door was open and I could see into the dining room. And sitting at a chair in the dining room was a woman. Oh boy. She was looking out the window, which right now only faced more houses, but um, back in the day would have looked straight down the hill toward the valley where the mills were. And she was, her hair was up and I could see all the detail in her hair and her profile. She had on a high necked dress, you know, it had like a, a little ruffle around the neck tied with a, a little bow. Mm -hmm. And her jacket was kind of elaborate, um, full button down shirt and long skirt. And I, I remember sitting up and looking and going, that's really weird. <laughs> I'm going to go back to sleep because <laughs> clearly I'm seeing things. Mm. And, um, so I did. I just shut my mind off, rolled over, and went back to sleep. A short time later, I woke up. My, I, I just felt something, and I woke up, and she was laying in bed next to me and looking at me. Oh. Laying right next to me oh, and my God. Right at me. So instead of freaking out, I just kind of went, you can have it, and got up and went and slept on the couch. Um, it was an odd, odd experience. Um, I only told my roommate about it. I didn't tell anybody else because I felt strange. Um, but things continued to happen after that. You know, uh. We had a cat who used to run and chase things that weren't there. He used to um, scream, at, or scream, but meow at the ceiling. And you know, try to jump up toward the ceiling. Uh, my roommate had her, her alarm clock used to turn off on its own. Yeah. Uh, her music, her, her stereo used to turn on on its own and play and uh, would happen all the time. And yeah. it, only hers and it never happened to the previous tenants. So it was all very strange. And then one night we had friends over and our friends are sitting up on the couch and um, 
we're just all talking. All of a sudden, one of our guy friends, he was about 25 at the time, just jumped up, looked at us, and said, I've got to go. Like, what do you mean you've got to go? Why are you acting weird? You know, we're having a good time. It's early. He said, no. He said, I've got to go. Somebody just whispered in my ear, and I need to get out of here. Uh-uh. So, he did. And, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, my parents did sell the house and um, moved to New Hampshire. <laughs> but it was about a 120-year-old house by the time they sold it. And uh, it definitely had a creep factor. Um, I hope you enjoyed my story. And uh, I love the podcast. Keep things going. I appreciate it. Thanks, Liz. Oh, my goodness. Everything else, fine, spooky, sit in the chair, look out the window, whisper in people's ears, but waking up with a ghost laying right next to you in bed, no. <laughs> I just, that's terrifying. Thank you for sharing. Um, let's do one more story. I just have so many that I want to just sort of jam pack this episode. So let's go for one more. Hi, Miss Sour. I'm Grace. Oh, Miss Sour. I, I cannot tell you when I saw that you liked it. I literally, I was on the face, I was on FaceTime with my friend, and I flipped <laughs> out. I was like, oh, oh God, please, this is my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was, I, uh-uh. was, so, I was so excited. <laughs> um, I feel like I know I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> You're silly. Um, so, I am 13 years old. And I oh my goodness. Like, I can just say it with you and completely ignore the fact that I'm not supposed to be listening to it. Oh, of course okay, you are. Not with me. Um, <laughs> but like, I am obsessed and this has been happening. This, my little thing has been happening for a while now and it just spiked while I started listening to your podcast again. And I am truly excited. Um, I really, really, really hope you read this or you listen to this on the podcast as I'd be Oh, it'd be such an honor. Um, <laughs> What's but, going on? Yeah. yeah. So, it all started... Oh, wait, hold on. Before I tell the story, um, I really want you to give you um, reactions while you're in the story, if you can listen to this, because I just, I want to know what you think about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, I was really young. I was still living in my grandpa's house. It was when I first moved to Maine. Um, I think a couple years after. I was going to sound so weird. I was dumping beans in the woods. Oh. And I heard a little rustle in the leaves. Um, and I had looked up to see what it was because I thought it was our neighbor's dog, Mitty. She's a little black pug. Oh. Um, but it was something black, all right, but not at all what I thought it was. It was a probably 10 foot tall shadow figure Oof. towering over me um oh sorry the background noise my mom tucking my little brother in <laughs> oh. but um so yeah it's like a 10 foot tall shadow figure towering over me um, Yikes. just standing there i try to step back i take one step back it takes one step forward i take i i was so stupid with this i took a step forward towards it it takes a step back. Oh. I mean, I don't know, but I was, I don't know what I thought it was, but like, I didn't know what it was until I started listening to your podcast. Oh, no. And I was like, oh crap, that, like, that happened to me. I saw one of those. It was uh-huh. in my backyard while I was dumping beans in the woods as a <laughs> tiny little kid. Um. But I, after that, I just saw like little things out of the corner of my eye, you know, things climbing the wall. Oh, no. Weird figures in the corner, like the ceiling corner, on the hallway. Yeah. Um, I know it sounds really weird and it sounds so weird that I'm so mellow about this, but Mm-mm. I've kind of, I kind of grew up around it, so it's not that big of a deal anymore. Oh. Um, but I just, Fast forward a couple of years, I move into my new house. Um, we actually moved twice, not because of anything, but like we just, we were in a rental for a while and then we just moved into our hopefully forever home that we're still working on. Oh, fun. Hold on, my mom's walking by. <laughs> <laughs> not a secret or anything. I'm just kind of 
Oh, this okay. is great. I'm trying to be quiet. Um, but we just moved into this house, and in the pantry, we have this motion sensor light, which oh, this, okay. I got reminded of this when I listened to the one of the lady who worked in a nursing home, and the call button kept getting pressed. Yeah, like, yeah. This reminded me of that. Um, the motion sensor light kept turning on and off and on and off and on and off. But the, per- the oh. people who lived here before us, um, this lady had actually died in the house, natural causes. She was an old, really nice lady, um, okay. the mom of the guy who lived here. But we, the kitchen used to be a separate room, and we tore down the walls, and the mm-hmm. pantry, what is now, used to be her closet. And so we think that her, sorry, that her ghost was going in and out of the pantry just like continuously oh um, man because the light kept turning on and off and on and off and we took the light down and it was just in the pantry sitting up and it kept turning on and off and on and off and on and off it just kept Spooky. going set off and then we had to like throw it away and then it didn't do anything after that but we're not going to have emotions since they're light in there anymore no um and then one time when i had to share a room with my older brother while my room was still getting worked on. It was like a storage room. Um, one morning, it was still dark outside. I looked out the window and there was like, it wasn't like a shadow figure, but it was like an actual shadow person. Like, uh. it was, it didn't seem abnormal other than the fact that I could see through a man that was standing there, but there was no facial features. It was uh. just, it was like a gray tint of an outline of a man, and I just, Somehow I knew it wasn't bad. I just started okay. talking to him, and I was like, I waved to him, and he lifted his hand and waved back, and we were just kind of chilling there for like an hour and a half. Oh, I was just boy. talking to him. Obviously, he wouldn't talk back, but um, I was just talking to this thing that was standing outside my little brother's window, and not freaked out at all. I was yeah, I was freaking freaked out when I saw the thing, but like that's because I am a, I was a twelve year old girl at the time. Who thought there was a man standing out my little brother's window staring in at us. So oh. yeah, that was pretty scary. But then when I realized that that's not an actual human being. Oh. Sorry, there's a noise. It's been happening a lot recently. There's not any animals in my room, I promise. Oh. Like some paranormal activity going on in my room. It's kind of scary. Um, but I'll have to tell you more about it. Um. So I don't quite have enough time on this, but yeah, I just followed, this is like, oh yeah, sorry, hold on, let me get back on track. <laughs> um, I was just a big shingle girl, I was listening to your podcast today actually, and today is October 3rd or 4th I think. Okay. Um, oh my god, sorry there's noises and I don't like it, I don't like them in my room. Um, anyways, so I was dipping shingles out in the, um, out in my garage so we could put them on the house later, um, anyways. And I was listening to your podcast because that's, like, how I get through my day. Like, at school, if it's, like, a quiet class that I can just pop in some headphones and listen to your podcast. Oh my I would goodness. do that. I, I really would. I, I have to physically stop myself from doing that because... <laughs> I'll just listen to your podcast all day and I'll get sucked right into it and listen to it over and over and over again. <laughs> Anyways, while I was listening Aww. to it, it was, I forget which story, it was one of the, one, it was one of the episodes that we would tell you the stories and like, you'd listen to them. Yeah, it was one, one of the ones that, yeah, sorry, I'm getting really sidetracked. Um, but, and I started hearing like, tapping, like behind me. Oh. And that was that was freaky, like really freaky. Um, because there's nothing Spooky. there. There's nothing that there that there that could have been making the tapping noise. And then I felt a cold, and I mean like a freezing cold hand on my shoulder. And I whipped around, and there was nothing there that could have touched me. Like there, it wasn't the fan. It wasn't like that particular. Like, it was not the fan. Mm-mm. Um. Because I had just turned the fan off. I had just turned the fan off because it was getting annoying. But I felt like this freezing cold hand on my shoulder. Yes. And it, like, 
it wasn't like it just sat there for a minute like it's it's really weird you have to go to my, my tiktok page and i'll make it um <laughs> i'll make a tiktok about it i do have a private account but um you have to go to my page and i'll make a video of like showing how it just how i felt like it grabbed me uh, it was so freaky like that's spooky oh my god and there's been like tapping in my room Mm-mm. and i've like I have a fort up, and I see from, oh. like, it has like, someone over my fort standing up. I could see, like, the head oh. in there going up, like, lifting the sheet up, but there's no one in there, nothing in there that could have been done doing that, and it goes up, and then falls back down, and doesn't do anything after that. Like, it's, it's freaky, and I see things in my closet move, like, my clothing, but um, I'm kind of running out of time. But I know it's a lot to ask, but if you could please follow me on TikTok, I would literally die. Um, oh. Yeah, I loved your podcast so much. Oh my god, thank you for making the podcast. It saves me. Bye. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you, Grace. I don't know where you are on TikTok. I'll look at... Um... I'll look at the comments on my page, but I don't have your name here, so I will try to find you. Um, really spooky things are happening around you and in your house. I bet you have some kind of abilities to sense things that other people can't. But you know what's weird is you're not the only one who's mentioned that weird things happen when they're listening to the podcast. I just got an email from someone saying that their dogs were acting strange when they had uh, when they were playing a podcast in their house. I can't remember what episode they were referring to, but and over the years, other people have said the same thing. So I don't know. Maybe the stories kind of trigger the spooks to act up. I'm not sure. And if that's the case, I apologize to everyone because that's not the intention. But kind of fun if it's harmless spook. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you back here same time, same place next Friday for The Estate Part 2. I am going to, I think I'm going to try, if I'm able to, kind of pause um, accepting new stories onto the onto this recording thing on Telby because I really need to catch up before it gets out of control. So I think I might do a little pause. So if you're unable, if you're hoping to and unable to record something, that's why. I'll turn it back on once I catch up, but I don't want to get into a situation where I'm not um, putting everybody's story out there who wants it to be told. So, I'll see you next week. Spooky Halloween!